Morning Lifehouse Eureka. Good morning, gather around, gather around. Bless you guys this morning and bless a lot of our brothers and fathers that are up at Ruth Lake at the men's retreat, up there fishing and camping, having a tough life. After you choose a seat, if you can, if you are able, go ahead and stand with us and let's worship him this morning.
cannot express Words cannot express How song cannot express How great you are How wonderful you are How worthy you are How holy you are Words cannot express <laughs> Words cannot express how majestic, how perfect God, how perfect God you are, how good you are, how good you are. Ooh, I sing out my song to you, I sing out my Oh,
with your love that first loved me.
feel during worship, it was almost like uh, you just feel waves washing back. Anybody else feel that? It almost like waves washing back and forth. And I was asking the Lord what that was. I mean, it could just be his presence or whatever, but I felt like there was an, an intentionality of heaven over it. So I was asking him what it was. And um, he said the ebb and flow, and I don't use those words, but it's the ebb and flow that's happening. And I said, well, what, what is that about? And uh, he showed me the he showed me the beach here, and me and Spencer go to the beach all the time, looking for waves. And every time we go, the beach is different, and the waves are in a different place, and it always moves. So we're always going up and down the beach, looking for the best hole. And um, and the reason that is, is because the ebb and flow of the tide, and when the tide comes, it reshapes the beach, and it pulls things out, and it pushes things in. I just felt like the intentionality of heaven over you today is the ebb and flow of his presence right now, like the tide. And when the tide comes up, the tide just reshapes things and it pulls all the debris off the beach and relocates it. But also when the tide comes back, it leaves all these cool treasures on the beach. And when we take Ava with us, my little girl, she's the best time to go with her is when the tide is drawn back because it leaves all these little shells and treasures and agates and things. And it's just so much fun. And I just felt like that's the intentional heart of God over you today. Each one of us know our own lives. Each one of us know exactly where we're at. It doesn't even have to be a broken thing. But God is bringing things in and God is taking things out and God is reshaping and he's being intentional with you. And it's not a violent tide coming in, but it's the soft, loving, shaping tide of his love over your life. So if you can stand up right now, I just ask you to join me. I want everybody just close your eyes right where you're at. I just felt like the Lord is, is just releasing a sensitivity, eyes to see, and a spirit that feels the ebb and flow, the intentional ebb and flow of his presence in your life. And it's not just for a Sunday morning service, but it's a walking out of here. It's living your days. It's living, it's sleeping at night. It's just being sensitive to feel the ebb and flow of what he's doing. And I heard, I heard someone's thoughts uh, while, we were, while I was just talking about that. And your thoughts, your thoughts were uh, that the Lord takes away. And I wanna, I wanna realign that thought really quick because the way that I heard it was the Lord had taken so many things from you. And I just wanna, I, I wanna paint a little picture of the Father heart of God over your life. That God loves you because he loves you, because he loves you, because he loves you, because he loves you, and that's the reason he loves you, just because he loves you, okay? So we'll start with that. But God is so much more creative than punishment. Amen. God is not lacking in any way, shape, or form in the area of creativity. And God does not put his creativity aside when it comes to loving you. He is not a Neanderthal. He does not have a club in his hand. The creativity of God when it comes to loving you is so much greater than any form of punishment that could ever be found. And so many of us grew up with punishment, so when we look to God, we expect punishment, but God's not about punishment. God's more creative than taking to punish. Yes, we all have times in our life when loss happens and when it feels like things are taken from us. But I want to point out the good, loving, intentional heart of God over you, that God is a God of redemption. God is the God that comes in and gives where things have been taken. God is a God that comes in and fills in the holes of life with his sweet, sweet love. God is intentional about loving, loving, loving you, and punishment is not on his mind. He's a good, good father, better than any father or any authority figure you could have ever experienced in your life. His kindness, our definition of kindness doesn't touch what the de definition of God's kindness is. His God kindness towards you overflows from heaven upon you. His grace for you overflows from heaven on you. His compassion toward you overflows from heaven on you. 
He's not testing you. He doesn't have you on trial. He's not punishing you. He's got love, sweet love for you. Your portion is his love. Your portion is his grace. Your portion is his kindness. So Jesus, right now, I thank you that you're releasing a sensitivity for the ebb and flow of what you are doing in each one of our lives. God, I thank you for the sensitive flow of your presence in our lives, the reshaping things, the smoothing things out, that it's taking away debris, and it's leaving treasures in our lives, God. Jesus, I thank you for eyes to see what you're doing in each one of us. I thank you for a sensitive spirit to feel and understand your intentional love over each one of our lives. And God, right now, I just ask that you would put a special target on every single person here that feels like they're walking through something that's heavy or it's hard or it's draining or it's been a long, long season. God, I ask that there would be a special target on each one of them, that all of heaven would be pointed at them, that grace and mercy and kindness and peace would point at them right now, God, and just overflow from heaven. I prophesy over every single one of you that feel like you've been in a long, draining season. I prophesy a switch of seasons right now in Jesus' name. I speak it out right now that there's a change of the season right now, that the flow of heaven is coming into your life. God has not been distant. God has not been absent. So we just tell your eyes to open right now to the activity of heaven that's happening in Jesus' mighty name. Can everybody put a hand on your heart right before we close this? It's like Christian calisthenics, right? Stand up, close your eyes, put a hand on your heart. Next is jumping jacks. <laughs> I just want us all to pray in our own words, God. Give me a sensitivity to see and feel what you're doing in our lives. Give us eyes to see what heaven's doing. Give us ears to hear your voice. <laughs> God, I thank you that you're a father that doesn't yell at us. <laughs> That's good news. God, give us ears to hear your voice and what you're speaking into our lives and into our county, into our city. Give us eyes to see what heaven's doing. Give us eyes to see the movement of heaven in our homes, in our workplace, in Eureka, McKinleyville, Arcata, wherever we're coming from this morning. God, just give us, we just tell our spirits to stand up and be sensitive to the activity of heaven right now. That in that sensitivity that we begin to get understanding and see the intentionality of what you're doing, God. And God, I thank you for healing over bodies. Thank you for healing in hearts. I thank you for healing in minds. I thank you for healing in relationships. I thank you for provision of health. I thank you for provision of finances. I thank you for provision of grace and peace, God. I thank you for rest also. There's a few of you in here that the cry of your heart, if it were to put words to it, is just rest. So God, I thank you for an outpouring and provision of rest right now. I speak over every single one of them, restful nights, sleep-filled restful nights, waking up rested. God, I ask that you would teach each one of us how to receive your rest during the day. I bless the rest of your life. In Jesus' name. Everybody said? Amen. Why don't you thank the worship team? Wasn't it awesome? Go ahead and find somebody to give a big hug to. If you can't find anybody, I know Shuggy and Patrick over here in the wing would love some hugs. <laughs>
Come on in and grab a seat. We're gonna get, we're gonna get going. Okay. So hey, so if you see people walking around handing out bulletins, and you're like, I already got a bulletin. Well, what happened was, what had happened was, we got this. Uh, this is not today's bulletin. Somehow there was a lot more of last week's bulletin, so it's not going to do you any good. No, this is no good. So just take that one, put it on the seat next to you, and now you get a clean, crisp, brand new, current bulletin. So there you go. It's the lighter colored one. Don't be confused. All right. How is everyone? <laughs> good. We're missing a whole bunch of dudes this morning. We got a bunch of guys out at the men's retreat. I think there were 40 or 50 of us out there. Um, I bring back good news. I, we, Spencer and I came back last night. We got back late last night to be here with you guys this morning because we love you. Yeah. Um, but I bring back good news from the men's retreat. So it's going good. There, I mean, we were fishing and doing things like that. And um, yeah, the fishing derby, it was good. Uh, I don't know who won. I don't know. I don't know. I caught some fish and let them go, so that was that. But uh, th and there was actually somebody who caught a huge, huge, huge uh, bass. It was awesome. It was like, for Ruth, it was pretty good fishing off the bank. I think it was five pounds, 20 inches or something like that. So that's pretty good for, I mean, that's a good, 
good fish because I was catching these little bluegill that were <clears throat> whatever. I caught a pretty good bass, but threw it back. Um, but the good news I bring back is this. See, Willie and Steve Clark have been bragging since I got here. I've been here for a year bragging about being the reigning horseshoe champions. And I'm like, is that really even a thing? And uh, well, leading up to it, it was really annoying me because they're just bragging, bragging, talking about like, oh, like horseshoe. I don't know. It was a big deal. Well, they got dethroned. They didn't even make it to the semifinals. So that's the good news. Yes, yes, yes. I think me and Judah did better than them. So that's awesome. Willie tried to blame it on an old injury or something. I think Steve blamed it on Willie's old injury or something like that. But So when they get back, just, just rub that one in. <laughs> Willie disappeared to his tent for a few hours after it. And I'm like, yeah, what's up now, huh? There's not going to be many conversations around horseshoe over the next year in staff meetings. So good news. Good news for all of us. All right. Well, um, we're going to take up an offering. So if the ushers want to come forward. Yay. What's up, Shogi? Um, so we're going to do our declaration. We got a little bit different one. It's not new, but it's maybe new to you. Uh, if everybody wants to stand up with me, we're going to go through this declaration. Say it like you mean it. These aren't just words. These are declarations over our lives. We know that when we speak, our words have power, and these are powerful words that we're speaking into our lives. So here we go. I am powerful, and what I believe changes All right, cool. So we're going to go ahead and pass the, uh, our shiny little offering plates, and then we're going to roll the announcement video. Live House, Eure Live House Eureka! Oh, wait. <laughs> I'm Kaylani, and I'm here to bring you your weekly announcements. Have you been asking yourself the question, is there something that I can do to help out with Live House? Maybe paint something or clean something. I don't know, something to do to serve. Guess what? Now you can, because on the 24th of June, we will be having a work day at the Eureka campus. We're going to be painting. Oh my gosh, I love painting so much. Ah. That's right, you all. We're going to be painting the Eureka campus. It's going to be June 24th at 9 AM. If you want to get involved, make sure, please make sure you contact Scott Thompson. Hey, and we're also gonna be cleaning out the Grove. You know that little area over in the back side corner of the campus? Yeah, we're gonna clean that guy out. So you guys come prepared. All right, my beautiful and amazing family, I would love to express to you the need that we have for media team volunteers. If you're someone who's wanted to get involved with Lifehouse through media, please, please let us know. Contact Justin Grimaldo at justingrimaldo at gmail.com. This is a great way for you to get involved at Lifehouse and to serve. If you don't know anything about the camera or the computer, hey, don't be intimidated. We would love to help you and we would love to have you. So please, please, please let us know. All right, beautiful, beautiful family. Those are all of my announcements for you today. Get out, go outside, have a barbecue, go to the river. Remember, life is worth living, not worrying. So have a great and beautiful day. I'll see you guys later. Bye. Awesome. Hey, just a little bit, oh, that's not going to move. Just a little bit about uh, the workday on June 24th. Um, our, our beautiful campus here needs a little TLC. It needs some, some family time, loving on it. So we're going to be painting this entire room here, uh, which will be, there's going to be some changes that happen to this room, but we're going to be painting this room. Uh, I know that it'll take probably more than one day, and so we're going to start early on it and start working on it. But um, if you would love to paint, then we would love to have you. Also, in cleaning the grove, there's a huge pile of branches out there. We're going to rent a huge chipper, and we're going to chip all those, and we're going to clean the weeds out of the grove and get the grove ready to be used because we've got this beautiful grove of redwood trees, and it's just kind of growing up and being 
left how it is, and we don't like that. So we're going to make it beautiful again and clean it up, and we're going to eventually get some lights out there and a fire pit and all that kind of stuff so that we can actually enjoy the grove. Yeah, and then we're going to work on the field a little bit too, get that cleaned up. And then I need some people that, that love to plant flowers because uh, if you see, we have one really nice uh, planter out here with succulents in it. We're going to get three more of those and uh, we want to plant flowers in those, and we want to plant some plants out in the parking, you know, uh, islands out there. So we want to get some plants that'll grow up bigger and be nice. So if that's you, then we want to have you here helping. Actually, I'd love for 100% of the people in this room to show up June 24th at 9 a.m. because we'll give everybody a job and everybody can do something with many hands, right? A lot less work. So if there's five of us doing it, this is one big room for five people. But if there's a hundred of us doing it, then this is going to be easy. Cool. You guys all right with that? Everybody's like, is it one of those days? No, it's not one of those days. <laughs> Kidding me? I'm going to put this right here because my wife's speaking and I don't want her to fall down the stairs. I'll do it. I'll do it. Everybody freaking out. Right now, I'm going to release the kids. <laughs> if you're a child and you, or if you're a kid and you are in this building, then go ahead and stand up and meet Dwayne right in the back. Dwayne and Adrian are back there, and they're going to take you to Children's Church. Go have fun. Is that it? Just Ava. Everybody else is already back there, and you guys were yelling at me. All right, so we have an awesome speaker today, and I'm excited about it. Would you all please stand and welcome my beautiful wife, Lacey. Thanks. Awesome. How's it going? All right. So we're going to see where this goes today. We've got a lot in there. Anybody ever, you guys ever, when you go to speak, you just have like so much crammed in there that you're like, I don't really know what's going to come out. So we'll see. We'll see what comes out today. Um, Shuggy. Hello, but y'all look good. I'm glad you're here, made it. How many of you guys are here for your students that are here already for next year? <laughs> Love it. Welcome. That's so cool. All these new faces. Well, um, when I, you know, like I know some of you guys, it's, it's interesting. This is such an interesting thing because this is our home church, but yet we're kind of new, but we've been here a year. So it's, it's still, like I know you guys are still getting to know me, and I want you guys to be able to do that. But yeah, I know some of you guys, like I've known Nancy for, I don't even know, 14 years. So there's a mix. There's mixed in here. And um, so if you know some things that I'm already saying, just, you know, just go with it. Like, I hear Scott's stories a million times, and I just, it's okay. I just go with it. I love them. I love it. I love it. I love it. I can't get enough. <laughs> so, anyway, so if you've heard this stuff before, forgive me. You're just getting to know me, I guess, a, a little bit more again. Thank you. Um, Mike is awesome. So cool. We love you, Mike. But, uh, yeah, so a little bit about, about me. I'm over the first year school of ministry here, so some of you new students. Hi, you're going to know me well. Um, but uh, today I really want to talk about perspective. I kind of wanted to do a little bit of a follow-up, lacy version of Scott's thankfulness message that he had a couple weeks ago. How many of you guys were here for that? We have a thankfulness jar, a blessings jar. He brought it and read some of our blessings and just almost, they're really just our war stories. You know, I remember sitting there with that jar, not having any money to pay rent and pulling those testimonies out and just standing, like crying over some of those, like not knowing how we were going to make it. You know, those days where you're just like, I don't know how I'm going to make it tomorrow. <laughs> so those, that jar was really like, those really are pieces of our heart that we, those are victories and times that we really saw the Lord meet us when we were needing, um, needing breakthrough. But so much of that is perspective. You know, it's the way that you see life. It's the lens that you see life through. And thankfulness um, is something that you have to cultivate in your life. It's something that you choose to see 
through the lenses of thankfulness. And that's how you enter in, into the kingdom is through the, thank, through the gates of praise, right? Through thankfulness and the gates of praise, um, you enter into the kingdom. And I believe that if you have the lenses of thankfulness for your life, not that your life will be perfect because Jesus doesn't promise us a perfect life. He doesn't promise us, hey, every day you're going to wake up and there's going to be songs being sung over you. The angels are hard. You know, that's how I would love to wake up every day. You know, just angels singing me like a nice little sweet prophetic song about my day and then maybe a little like angel foot massage. Bobby Connor, anybody knows Bobby Connor? Bobby Connor is one of my favorite speakers and I love his life because supernatural is just everyday part of his life. And he tells a story about how, like, he had been ministering a really long time, and uh, the angel of the Lord came to him at night, and, and he, was, he was laying there, and he, he screamed because he, he was startled because there was an angel ma massaging his feet. And he screams, and the angel's like, hey, I'm here to help you out. You said you were tired. I'm here to give you a foot massage. So... God's not a, uh, you know, he doesn't, he doesn't only favor certain people. He doesn't play favorites. So I'm like, I receive that for myself. Anyway, total side note there. Total side note. But isn't that how we'd love life to be? Just every day, just basking in the glory, basking in the presence. And that is, to, that is the supernatural Christian everyday life. We should be connected to the presence. We should be connected to the glory. But we don't always experience perfection, we have bad days. We have days that suck. We have days that are filled with pain, filled with grief. Um, and thankfulness, when we have eyes of thankfulness, it gives us eyes to see what God is doing. Because it's not as important to know what's going on. It's really important to know what is God doing. What is God doing in your situation? So perspective is a really big deal. I really think that it's huge. The beginning of seeing the kingdom of your life is looking um, through eyes of thankfulness, through eyes of seeing. And Jesus thought it was pretty important because, you know, he would walk around and he would just shout crazy things like, those that have eyes, let them see, and those that have ears, let them hear. And People are, I, I, I just can't imagine hanging out with Jesus in, back in the day. Like, he just did such random, crazy things. He's so exciting, right? So just passionately just starts yelling, those that have eyes, let him see. Those that have ears, let him he hear. And um, what, But what was he doing? He's actually giving away eyes to see and ears to hear. He's, he's giving the grace to be connected to the kingdom. I'm going to read you, let me see. I think it's Matthew. This is how I do my notes. <laughs> Super professional. Super professional. So Matthew 13, 16. So he's talking about he's talking about parables in this this part, and they're ta he's, they're asking him why he's talking in parables to people. Um, so it's Matthew thirteen. Um, Matthew thirteen fourteen. You will keep on hearing. This is the prophecy of Isaiah, which he's saying is being fulfilled. You'll keep on hearing, but will not understand. You'll keep on seeing, but will not perceive. For the heart of this people has become dull, and with their ears they scarcely hear, and they have closed their eyes. Otherwise, they would, they would see with their eyes, hear with their ears, and understand with their heart in return, and I would heal them. But blessed are your eyes because they see, and your ears because they hear. For I truly say that many prophets and righteous men desired to see what you see and did not see it. And to hear what you hear and did not hear it. We are living in a time where the kingdom is at hand. You know, this is when Jesus was uh, fulfilling the law. But we are on this side of the cross. So we are living in a really exciting time. We are living in the age where nothing is impossible. That's really good news. 
and it's important, if nothing is impossible and the kingdom is at hand and there are two, there is a bigger reality. Now we have our reality, but God's reality is bigger and he calls us into his reality, right? So we need to be able to see what he's saying and hear what he's doing. It's very, very important, right? Isn't that exciting? So let's talk about, uh, let's, look at, let's look at this. This cracks me up. I was laughing today with the Lord um, reading this scripture. It's so fun. So I'm going to turn to John. I think that's the one I'm going to go to. John 6, 6 I think is the one I'm going to do. Kind of go, I, I kind of read all of the 5,000 fed story, so I'm trying to decide on which one I want to go on to, but, um, so yeah, John 6. So the, the story of the 5,000 fed, um, I think everybody knows it, but I want to talk a little bit about the backstory. <laughs> oh my gosh. So. So the backstory on this, everybody knows the story about, hopefully everybody knows the story about, uh, you know, Jesus has a huge crowd. There's 5,000 men and women and children. So, but the women and children aren't counted. Don't, that's a whole nother sermon I could preach on that, but we're not going to go there. Um, so there's a lot of people. That's a big crowd, probably 15,000 maybe. I think I've heard some people say, Woo! take that for the, for the camera. I got my boots on, so I'm, I'm good. Can handle those curves. So there's a whole bunch of people, and Jesus is there. Now, I, I want to tell the backstory because I just think it's funny because this is life. This is exactly what we're talking about in life. We have good days, we have bad days, we have busy days. Um, so this is a little bit of the crew, the crew was going through this. This was what their world looked like. They just had got commissioned for the 12 to go out. They were sent out to go do the works of Jesus. So exciting times, right? They're, they're sent out, they're going out, they're casting out devils, they're healing the sick, and, and it's, it's exciting. But I'm sure they're tired. Jesus is like, don't take any money, don't, take, don't even take two shirts, like just go. Just go, and I will provide for you. That's a whole nother like, lesson on faith. That's hard. So they're going, but it's exciting, but it's crazy, and it's a faith time. And they come back with all these stories, um, and they're, they're tired, but they're excited. And then you have John, who's been doing this amazing ministry, John the Baptist, and he just got killed. He just got beheaded. So you can imagine, like, that's kind of a scary time when you're like, uh, we're doing this stuff, but people are getting killed for this stuff, and that's kind of crazy. Um, so all kinds of emotions happening. And Jesus tells them, let's go out and rest. Like, you guys need some rest, right? So... Oh, yeah, Jesus, we need some rest. That sounds great. Thank you. So he takes them away and then leads them to this crowd of 5,000 plus women and children. So this is, this is, I'm just laughing. Jesus is so funny. And so then they minister all day, like all day. And um, then Jesus, so some, some scriptures say that the disciples ask Jesus. But in John, this is why I like John, he's really into the details John mentions that Jesus basically looked at them and said, where are we going to buy bread so all these people can eat? So he actually asks the question, knowing, it says, knowing, he said this to test him, for he himself knew that he was, what he was intending to do. Jesus is just so funny. Let's go rest to a group of 5,000 men. And then let's minister all day. And then I'm going to say, what are you going to do about all these hungry people? There's all these hungry people. What are you guys going to do? And so <laughs> intern Andy, I call him intern Andy because he's kind of like a side disciple. Andrew is one of Jesus' disciples, but who's heard of him? Barely anybody, right? Right? Intern Annie, Andy, it even says he's Simon Peter's brother. So, like, he's just like Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. So, intern Andy's there, right? And he looks at Jesus. Now, perspective, perspective, perspective. 
They have the Lord with them. The Lord is with them. And he asks, the Lord asks you a question. And so intern Andy goes, well, there's a kid here that has two fish and five loaves of bread. Now, if I was Andrew, I would be embarrassed to say that to Jesus. Like, what is that? That's like a spit in the wind. That's going to do nothing for that many people. But what happened? He looked around because God said, Jesus said um, in Luke, I'll just paraphrase. He said in Luke, he said, what are you going to do about, what do you have to feed these people? Go look. Go look. I'm saying all this because God asks us questions all the time about things that we have in our lives. What are you going to do about this? And he'll ask us knowing that he has answers to those questions. (laughs) Knowing that he's trying to lead you into a supernatural encounter. Into, hey, I actually have some things that are available for you that are beyond your means. Jesus is with them in the, in, in the midst of this, this crowd. And so intern Andy, he says, hey, got five loaves, two fish. And then we know what happens. Jesus multiplies it. He has them sit down. Um, and he gives thanks for what he has. He gives thanks. He says, thank you, Lord. I'm going to take this, and I'm going to believe that you're going to do something. And he feeds, you know, everybody. And I love that 12 baskets are left over because 12 is just um, one of those numbers that's really, it really stands for apostolic and kingdom. And so we know now, like, this is, this is a picture of the kingdom, right? This is a picture of the kingdom happening. So it's hilarious. So then Jesus Jesus, perceiving that they're going to take him by force and make him king, takes off again. Um, And they get in the boat, and Jesus sends them away on the boat. He says, okay, guys, go away. I'm going to stay and pray. And I think this is so funny, you guys. You ever read the Bible and just laugh? Like, wow, this is hilarious. So evening came. The disciples are out at, out at sea because they're crossing the, the sea. Um, and it, it's already become dark. And the sea starts, the wind starts coming. This is horrible wind comes, right? And when they were, had rowed about three or four miles, um, so they're three or four miles away from Jesus. I think it's in Luke. But it says that Jesus was watching them. Jesus was watching them and saw them struggling. They're three or four miles out at sea, but he's the God of the universe. He's everywhere. He can see. There's nothing that Jesus is going to be missing. He sees our lives. He sees us, right? He sees them struggling. He sent them out to sea. He sent them there. They're struggling. He's on the shore. I don't know. He's on the mountain praying, doing awesome God things watching them struggle out at sea. So he starts, he, he, he walks to them, intending to pass them by. <laughs> I see you struggling. I'm going to pass you by. I'm just going to keep on walking. They are so scared. They, they think it's a ghost, and they're screaming. And then he calls out to them and obviously gets in the boat. But this is the cool thing. So he gets in the boat. If you read all the different translations, you get kind of different pieces of different things. And immediately they were at shore. Total side note. But what? Do you read the Bible? Is this crazy stuff in here? But he was going to walk by them. This is perspective, you guys. The king, they they were so scared. This is what I thought was, this is kind of what I marveled over with, um, with this, and I, I do think it's in Mark, so I'm going to turn to it. It says, so, there, so he's walking on water. Immediately, Jesus made his disciples get into the boat and go ahead of them. And he left to pray. So when it was evening, the boat was in the middle of the sea. He was alone on the land, seeing them straining at the oars, for the wind was against them. It was about the fourth watch of the night. He came to them walking on the sea, and he intended to pass them by. 
But when he, they saw him walking on the sea, they supposed it was a ghost and cried out. Like, was Jesus just dying laughing? Like, these are his best friends. Like, these are his best friends on the planet. And they're just rowing, just about to die out there. And he's like, I'm just gonna, I just think that's funny. <laughs> Take courage, it is I, do not be afraid. And they got, he got into the boat with them and the wind stopped and they were utterly astonished for they had not gained any insight. This is what I marvel about. For they had not gained any insight from the incident of the loaves, but their heart was hardened. They just saw 5,000 loaves of bread, 5,000 people fed by loaves and fishes, but they missed something there. They missed something. And I think that it's important for us to stop sometimes and ask, okay, where is Jesus? Like they are, they are literally best friends with God and they still are missing the perspective that he can handle them. He can take care of them, that he can see them. Like it says he saw them out there. Like he knew, he knew. And yet they had a hard time with the physical Jesus with them. They had a hard time having faith. What? Like, dude, you're connected to God. He's your best friend. And we have the same time. We have the same things where we miss God sometimes in our life, don't we? Where we're like busy or we're afflicted or we have things happening in our lives and we just sometimes don't see what he's doing. Wow. Wow. I just think that's so funny. Intern Andy and the, the crew out there just freaking out. <laughs> Thankfulness, Scott, Scott wrote, said this last week in Fortuna, which I thought was really good. He said, thankfulness, what, you're, what you are thankful for, you'll be faithful to. What you, are faith, what you are thankful for, you'll be faithful to. And I just think it's all about the way we see. It's all about thankfulness. Um, you know, I, I'm just, this is, this is new for me. I'm just starting to talk about uh, this part of my life uh, publicly. But I have something called trigeminal neuralgia. It's a, it's a disorder disorder. Uh, that affects your nerves in your brain. So it shoots pain in my head. Um, and so I found, I've had it for about four years and obviously I've done tons of different tests to make sure it's not something worse or anything. But, um, but the, my perspective has really been challenged over these last four years. And um, God's really been putting his finger on this part of my life lately uh, so this is, it's very raw for me to share publicly, but I'll just share because there's, n there's no part of, my, uh, I want there to be no part of my life that God can't go here, here. Let's, let's, let's talk about this. So this is a, this is a new part of my life I'm talking about, but when you're, when you have chronic pain and you're somebody that has, um, a disability or, uh, a sickness, um, it, it affects everything. It affects your whole life. It affects your whole life. And so I have, like, I have really been challenged in this area because I, I know God heals, and I know God is good, and I know that this isn't his will for me. Yeah. But it's my reality. So how do I remain thankful and and full of hope and full of uh, awareness of what he's doing in my life and deal with this. And I, and I want to talk about that because I think a lot of times in church, we, we really like fluff up the good stuff, but we don't talk about the reality of how do you do life <laughs> and the kingdom? Because the kingdom is something that it, it's bigger than us. And I think it's something, you know, God is something that we come underneath, that we submit to, that he is the highest truth in our lives. 
But our reality sometimes when walking that out doesn't always parallel. You know what I mean? It doesn't always look like it's supposed to look. We live in a fallen world. We live in a world where, where it's not heaven on earth. It's our job to bring heaven to earth. So um, thankfulness is a really big deal for me because I have to manage my energy. I have to manage my time. I have to, I've had to learn how to manage every part of my life. And I hate consistency and I hate management. I'm just like one of those like, woo, I like to just color outside the lines and do whatever I want to do. And, you know, my life has changed some. But it's also been a gift in a lot of ways because I have been able to really decide what am I passionate about? What, it, what do I have energy for? And I'm so blown away by how good my life is. Like, I have the best life. I, I have the best kids, the best husband. Like, I truly, truly love and am so thankful for my life. It's amazing. It's beautiful. It's so fun. Like, I genuinely... Uh, we, were, we were at bowling the other night, and I was like, this is the best. Like, I just love my family. But my reality is, is that I have to manage my energy. I have to manage what I can give them. What I have to manage even, like, the way I see myself as a mom, the way I see myself. I, you know, when, you're in, when you have chronic pain, you're, you feel like you're constantly, um, you're constantly in lack, almost. Like, you feel like, you know, it's like, you don't have enough energy to do everything you want to do. So it's, does this make sense, making any sense? Like it's, it, you, and, and, then you ha, and then you have to not judge, over judge yourself because <laughs> you want to accomplish all of these things, but yet you have enough energy for this. Why am I saying all this stuff? I'm saying it because this is life. This is life. We all have our own time we have to manage, emotions we have to manage, Love we have to manage, passion we have to manage. Um, but keeping God the center of that perspective, keeping him, whether it's like, whether it's, it's a dream that you're trying to fulfill or a healing that you're waiting on or a family member that you're praying for, keeping him the center of that perspective. Like what is God doing? I can say that this year has been one of the most challenging years for me, um, because it's been really stretching being in first year and being with all of, um, all of the students and, and the poll and the responsibility. But it has been like one of the best years of my life. It really has. Like I have grown so much this year in my heart and my ability to see people and my ability to love and my ability to, to celebrate what God's doing in people's lives. And, and it's, a lot of it has been about him fine-tuning that perspective of thankfulness of what I get to do, what I get to be a part of. Because we always have those options of going, oh, this is what I, this is what I want, this is what I wish, but, but this is my reality. Um, when Leif was here, <laughs> when Leif was here, he, he, you guys remember when Leif was here a few months ago? So good. He was praying for us. And um, he got to me, and he just, he just started crying, which was like, okay. You know, he's very, like, expressive, and so it's okay. And we, we're friends, and, like, he's a dad in our lives, and we respect him so much. But he starts crying, and he just can't stop crying. And he's like, I just feel like the Father is crying over you. And um, I was like, okay, awesome. And then all of a sudden, something started inside of my heart. I was like, what is happening right now? And I just start crying and crying and crying. And a few, like a week later, I'm having this struggle with my, with my trigeminal neuralgia, which is my head thing. I'm in pain. I'm trying to figure out, okay, what do I need to do? What do I need to change? And God shows up. He, I have this encounter with Father God. And in the encounter, it was like I was able to see him looking at me and ministering to me. And I was able to see the compassion that he had towards me. The love and the compassion that he had towards my situation. And I realized that I wasn't being compassionate towards myself because I was keep trying to keep myself to the standard of like what I expected myself to put out and where I was at and how frustrated I was with, 
with my, whatever, with all of where I was at. And just, but, but seeing his attitude towards me, seeing his heart towards me, seeing the compassion that he had towards me, it changed everything for me. Because I was able to go, wow, he loves me. He loves me. Even in my weakness, even in my affliction, not that it's his heart to be, that I'd be afflicted, but even though I'm here in the middle of where I'm at, he loves me. He's so compassionate. And I say that over you, like he loves you in the middle of your situation, whether you're whether he's led you to a place that you have to feed 5,000 or you're on a boat that you feel like is about to go down, he's with you. He loves you. He's compassionate towards you. And I just think that perspective, how he sees us, like if we can see the way he sees, everything changes. Everything changes. Like when I was able to see the way he saw me and the way he saw my, my condition, I was just like, Oh, I gotta give myself more grace. Like, he loves me. It's okay. Like, I'm enough. Like, what I can bring is enough. And what you can bring is enough, where, wherever you're at. So, really, I just, I just wanna just, that's all I wanna say. I wanna pray for some people um, before we end. I wanna pray for people that deal with chronic, chronic conditions, whether that's uh, an, a, whether that's affliction, whether that's pain, whether that's you deal with the same condition all the time. I want, we want to pray for you before we leave as a congregation. Just want, you, you know, like I think being someone that, for me, that deals with chronic pain, like I've realized it, it is hard to keep getting prayer. <laughs> like I understand if that's you. Like it's hard to keep getting prayer, but I've just personally made a vow, vow to God that I will keep getting prayer. Because it's just, I have to choose to believe that he's, he is who he says he is. He is who he says he is. And so I say that over you. Like, even, even if you've gotten prayer a million times, let's pray again. Because God is good. And he, today is the day of breakthrough. Um, and the second group of people I want to pray for are just people that you're just having a really hard time seeing where God is in your life. And... Um, in your situation, and you just need a, you just need some more perspective. You just need some thankfulness. You just need some help tuning into that voice, that question that 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 Holy Spirit's been asking you. So, um, if that's you, if you for, let's let's pray for the people that want to see first. So, if that's you and you want a pers pers perspective shift and you want to have some hope and you want to have some. Um, thankfulness, then then just raise your hand or stand up or whatever you want to do. And if you're at home listening, just put a hand on your heart. So Holy Spirit, I thank you, God. I thank you that you are in our midst, God, that you are in our world, God. We don't want to miss. We don't want to be ones that miss what you're doing and what you're saying, Lord. So God, I just ask for eyes to see and ears to hear, God, for everybody that's listening, Lord, that we would see you, that we would hear you, God, that we would know you, that we would recognize you in our lives. Lord, we call out to you, God, that you, um, that you aren't going to let us fail. You're not going to let us fail, God. I thank you for that. Thank you that you're with us, God. <laughs> Yeah, just more hope, Lord. Just hope infusion, Lord. Hope infusion, God. I just speak to the weariness. For those of you that are just weary, I just pray for that perspective shift, that you'd be able to see the way that God sees you, that you'd be able to see your situation the way that he sees you. He's so compassionate towards you. He's so loving towards you. He's not disappointed. He's not disappointed. You're enough. You're enough. Thank you, Lord. You know, God showed me the other day. I'm gonna end with this and then we'll pray for people. He told me the other day I was praying. You ever ever just be in prayer and you hear like something that your spirit's saying and you're like, oh wow, that's what does that mean? I was praying and my spirit just kept saying, In your glory is infinite potential. In your glory is infinite potential. In your glory is infinite potential. And I was like, 
what does that mean exactly, Lord? Like, break that down for me. And he showed me, I'll tell you what the definition is, but he showed me, I was able to, I was able to see, you know, when God talks to you, you kind of like, you can see it, you can feel it, you can, it's like one word has a thousand meanings in it, and you can kind of get all of that. And so he, he showed me the way he sees us. And when he sees us, he sees every situation of our life with the infinite potential of goodness. You know, he can take any situation and turn it good. He can take anything and turn it, says, says that in scripture, it's, that's scriptural. That's scriptural. Is that right? Scriptural? Sounds funny. He's working on your behalf. And so infinite is the unlimited expanse in which everything is located. It's total, all-embracing. Too numerous to be counted. Having no limits or boundaries in time, space, or extent, or magnitude. So he looks at you and he sees all that you are, all that you could become. And it's so hopeful. When I saw it, I was like, that is so exciting. Like you actually look at us with the best potential possible like that we could have, that we could do. Like even in our disappointment, even in our lack, even in the areas that are not successful, he's looking at it going, this could work. <laughs> that could work. I could make that work. I could do something with that. I could spin that. Like, he's so positive. He's super positive. I think that's encouraging. I think that's super encouraging. In your glory is infinite potential. If you have chronic pain or you're in a condition that you just need a breakthrough in, could you stand up or raise your hands? If the people around these guys, you guys are the prayer team. Just go to them and just pray. We just declare just goodness, goodness, goodness. Lord, I just thank you that you are so good. You are so good. Let's speak breakthrough, Lord. I have learned so much about God's heart through this season. <laughs> and I thank you, Lord, that we can, we, can, we can glimpse your glory, Lord, in all things. But Lord, I just speak that, that your strong arm would raise up, Lord, and break off the affliction off these people, Lord. Just thank you that your goodness is the best. <laughs> yeah, so Jesus, right now, <clears throat> we, just, we just speak complete healing over everybody. From head to toe, inside and out, whether it's nerves or muscles or organs, whatever it is, tendons, bones, joints, ligaments, whatever it is right now, inside and out, every single body right now, we just say receive healing, that the strong hand of God would rest on you right now, that chronic pain would sit down and shut up, that chronic complication, that chronic depression, that chronic mindsets would sit down and shut up. And God, that your glory would stand up and shine bright in every single life right now in Jesus' mighty name. I even speak to the things that some of you have overlooked in your life and learned to deal with and learned to live with right now. I tell those things to be healed right now in the mighty name of Jesus. God, I thank you that we see your kingdom moving right now in everybody. In Jesus' name, we just, we just speak to that chronic pain and we replace it with, with chronic healing, that you would be a, 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 a health, health zone, that wherever you go, that perfect health would just flow from you, that that place that has felt like more than a thorn in your side, but it's felt like uh, even hobbles on your feet right now, that that would be your place of freedom, that you would be one who carries the keys to unlock others' hearts into healing in Jesus' mighty name, where addiction has come in and become chronic, we tell addiction to sit down and shut up. We grab that snake by the head and we crush it under the feet of Jesus right now. Yeah, good, 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 good. God, you are so good. 
You are so powerful. You are so mighty. God, we thank you for perspective change also. We thank you that we are being invited in to see your glory in every situation. God, I thank you that you see us through your glory. And now, God, I ask that every single person in here, that we would have eyes to see ourselves through your glory, eyes to see our situation, eyes to see our life through your glory. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. And I thank you for the power that is found in vulnerability. I thank you for the power that is found in us talking about what's going on and us having a voice that describes what's happening instead of keeping it to ourselves and trying to walk through it alone. Lord, I thank you for the power that's found in vulnerability, the power that's found in I'm gonna let you in and let you see what's going on in my life. for freedom. Thank you for freedom. God, teach us to walk with you, Lord. Wherever we go, Lord, that we would always look for you, God, with us. You know, it's always amazing to me the stories where Jesus was there, but they didn't see him. <laughs> he rose from the dead, and he was walking with the disciples, and they didn't know it was him. <laughs> He is a funny, funny, funny guy. So funny. I love it. Show up with your best friends, have a whole conversation, they don't recognize you. A bunch of losers. It's funny. God, I just thank you. Thank you that you're always with us, Lord. You are always with us, God, and you are so much bigger than we give you credit for. So be big in our lives, Lord. Be big in our lives. We give you room. Lord, I just thank you for this awesome church, Lord. Thank you for what you're doing here. We're so blessed. We're so blessed. We're so blessed to be here and live here and love here. It's awesome. So if there's anybody else that needs prayer, we're going to invite the prayer team up. Go have a great day. Enjoy your family. Enjoy, the hopefully, the sunshine. We'll come out. You can pray it in. See you guys next week. <laughs>